Hi, it's Steve and Joe from Fresh Agenda, and Steve, we've got a, a bit of a lineup this week, um, starting with this week's GDT results. Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot happening in the background, mm. um, as always. Yes. As always, <laughs> uh, this was a pretty negative result. Mm. Um, you see there the um, there's not red ink, they're blue bars, but um, mm -hmm. we had heavy falls across um, fats. Uh, powders were a bit mixed, yep. but but they were they were both down. You can see where it's left us is quite a a widespread between Oceania prices and those in the US and in Europe. Yeah, so. a bit more aligned on the powders, but it, it implies that butter and cheddar might have a, a bit further to fall. Yeah, later. Yeah. Uh, that's right. Um, quite an interesting result in the detail. I mean, the big thing was the dominance of China. Yes. Which came back strongly. You know, buyers came back strongly after a lull. You can see the lull graphically there in that um, trend chart where we've omitted the left-hand axis for good reasons. Uh, but overall, China took up two-thirds of products sold. Um and if China didn't turn up, it would have been quite a bad result, you think? Yeah, significant bounce back um, in those charts on the right-hand side, particularly for whole milk powder, which is interesting given what we're seeing in yeah. China. Um, with those very high whole milk powder stocks that have been um, built up over that period of lockdown, mm. um, less opportunity for distribution of fresh products, so more uh, milk converted into whole milk powder, which yeah. is appears to have really bumped up those stocks. So you would think they wouldn't be turning up so strongly to the GDT. Yeah, that we think or we hear that that, that was a short-term aberration, mm. though significant. You can see the build-up there. Yeah. Um, milk prices are staying firm. They've only come off a little bit. Mm. Um, and that so that pull to fresh processing is pretty strong. And the companies in China are saying that they want to continue to grow that those lines of business, yep. um, backed by the government, speak on you know the importance of nutrition. Mm -hmm. um, but this could be strategic buying because imports are far more attractive. That um, comparison we have there is to March data, mm. uh, and the import costs have got a lot more attractive since then. They're probably yeah. three or four hundred dollars cheaper. Yeah, as as we'll see in the next few months. So. It could be we've heard talk in other categories or other commodities that China is going to be doing some food security stockpiling. Yeah. Um, so that this you know may be a role for um, for whole milk powder as well. Sure. In the, in the scheme of that, it'll be interesting to watch this. So the other big thing that's mm. happened this week, which um, uh, has had a lot of analysis as to its its potential impact, is the assistance announced by the U.S. government. Mm -hmm. um, two big parts to talk about the. Uh, payments to farmers totaling 2.9 billion, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of questions uh, yet to be fully clarified. Um, what it's going to comprise two two elements. Um, there's a payment for 85 percent of the loss in the first quarter up to the middle of April for farmers for farmers mm -hmm. only farmers, uh, and then 30 percent of the loss in quarters two and three mm -hmm. through to the mid October. Um, that what's the nature of that loss? It hasn't been defined yep. and what it's based on. Um, it's a while before we'll know that detail. Um, we've done an indicative calculation there based on where futures were when this drama started mm -hmm. and where they were uh, this week. So you'd expect there's about a, you know, in Q2, about a $5 per hundred weight loss, and that narrows later. Mm. If you roll that through, and there's been several bits of analysis done, the best one uh best one we've seen by Matt Gould, which uh, Matt's gone into quite a bit of detail. I think it's worth a read. Um, ask if you several, can get it. If you can get it. Ask several questions. You know, there's still some doubt of whether a farmer can apply for uh, a limit, be limited by 125000 or 250000 uh, So that's per commodity. So if a farmer is producing milk and, say, and something else, grain, yeah. or something else. Feed, yes. yeah. yeah. Mm. Uh, there's potential there. So that's also an uncertainty. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't take much before a large farm um, caps out yeah. at these rates. And it's quite hard in the calculations, uh, at least that Matt's done, to see how it can be fully applied. Mm. You know, Will they use up all that money or will these become social payments? Yeah. That's okay. an interesting issue. As the year goes on, re-election prospects become more important. And maybe the farmers have a role in that for president yes in some of these critical states so one to watch the other part of this is the product purchases which uh, have been pledged at 100 million per month mm -hmm. uh, again many questions um, and and in the background there are other existing programs which could also apply to dairy um, 
question is how will it work? What purchase price? What's the mix of products purchased? Sure. Um, and you know we've we've had an estimate of that ourselves, and it's about two and a half three percent of product or milk in milk equivalents could be purchased over that. 10 month period so not huge not huge in the scheme of things mm. the other question is whether this actually affects demand well that's a question with always with aid programs whether you're um you know maybe um distributing this to people that wouldn't otherwise buy but mm. also whether you are um actually cannibalizing a bit of retail and mm. food service demand through these programs so yeah. it's uh it, it's always a question isn't it it is whether it's new demand or just um, subsidising, yeah, redis- redistributing demand. Mm. Mm. And look, in our calculations, we were to take these things into account. Sure. So we we ran through this last time, um, and and it gets us down to a you know what we're trying to do is project the the impact on stocks over time. So those red headings are where obviously this program is hitting. That's right. Um, those those calculations as we we run through to the next month. And whether or not we see an impact on milk supply, there's various measures being implemented. There's a lot of dumping going on in the US. As and some commercial measures. Yes, plenty yeah. of commercial supply management yep. measures. Um, but based on if if you accept that those product purchases take product out of the market yep. to the tune of 2.5-3%, we still think that leaves about a 4 to 5% gap that um, milk supply needs to slow in order to balance the US market by Q4. Wow. It's quite a bit. Yeah. Mm. So we have seen some of that early, but will that persist as we go through the year and, you know, farmers get payments? I mean, there's a lot of farmers being encouraged to keep doing what they're doing. Yeah, and especially small farmers. Yeah. Mm. Okay, over to Europe. Yeah. Just a little segue here. Um, Europe has also got an issue with oversupply of milk. This may help to some extent. Yeah, they're pretty... um, uh, nasty looking maps depending on your perspective i mean we're used to a lot of brown and red in in australia Mm, um, over the last couple of years but uh, looking pretty dry in in europe although it hasn't been too hot yet yeah not too hot but um, but certainly dry and what that's done and then just skipping around the continent to a few interesting regions in terms of the pasture growth Mm. the indicators we draw on showing that in france and germany they're certainly well down and we've seen that in the numbers production numbers go to Ireland and Poland, things aren't so bad. So sure. it's going to be a mixed story yeah. you know, in that respect. Mm-hmm. I think that's almost time for your chart of the week. Oh, chart of the week. We're back in the States. Um, and probably, you know, in the context of, you know, supply falling off a cliff in March, uh, we've had a, a 35-month high in milk production growth. Demand, demand falling off a cliff. Sorry, demand <laughs> falling off a cliff. We've had a 30-month, yeah. a 35-month high in uh in milk growth in yeah. March um, while all of this was, was happening. So we've had an increase in, as you can see in that chart on the, the left-hand side there, both yield per cow and the number of cows has, mm. has trended up, um, which hasn't happened um, previously, um, apart from the last month or so. And, and obviously those um, regional differences are still very much mm. in play. It's only a few states that didn't grow yeah. in, uh, in March. So not a great situation to try and put the brakes on. No. All right, that's probably enough. Um, thanks for watching. We'll be back next week. Uh, that's where you can get hold of us. Mm-hmm.